the PV diagram shows two states of a monatomic ideal gas. If the process going from state 1 to state 2 is isobaric, draw the PV diagram for the process and find the work done by the gas, the changing internal energy of the gas, and the heat added to the gas. Isobaric means constant pressure, so it's a horizontal line. So it just goes straight from state 1 to state 2. Now let's find the work done by the gas. The work done by the gas is the negative work done on the gas. And the work done on the gas is the area. And because the volume decreases, it is the positive area. So, it's negative. The height of the area is 3 atmospheres. So it's 3 times 10 to the 5th pascals. The base of the area is 0.3. So it's 0.3 and that's the standard unit cubic meters. So that's it. And so this is a negative 0.9 times 10 to the 5th joules. For delta U, Certainly, we have the first law that says that delta U is Q plus the W as the work done on the gas. But we do not have Q. We just found the work, but no Q. That means uh, we cannot find the delta U using the first law because uh, we don't have Q. And the only equation that involves Q is this equation. So what we have to do is we have to find the delta U using a different method and then use this equation to find the Q. So let's see. Delta U is what we're looking for now. And uh, out of all the internal energy, the only change involved in this problem is the kinetic energy. And uh, let's see. It is a monatomic ideal gas. If you remember, for a monatomic ideal gas, it only has... Uh, translational kinetic energy. So this is the change in translational kinetic energy. And the, from the kinetic theory, we know that the total translational kinetic energy is the average translational kinetic energy times the number of molecules. And uh, do you remember what the average translational kinetic energy of a molecule is? It is uh, 3 halves kT. So this is the, the change in 3 halves kT times n. And uh, we know that nKT is uh, nKT equals to nRT equals to PV. So this is uh, the change in 3 halves uh, nRT and 3 halves PV. That's the ideal gas law, right? And so the, to find the delta U, we just have to do the final 3 halves PV minus the initial 3 halves PV. So it will be 3 halves PV final minus 3 halves PV initial. Okay, of course we can factor out the 3 halves. And in this case, the final pressure and the initial pressure, they are the same. So we can factor out the pressure too. The pressure is 3 times 10 to the 5th pascals. And then the final, V final minus the V initial. The V final is 0.2. The V initial is 0.5. So this gives us negative 1.35 times 10 to the 5th joules. And so this is the change in internal energy. And since the change in internal energy is negative, it means uh, the internal energy decreases, the temperature decreases, which matches what we expect because uh, the P times V decreases. Now we can use the work and the delta U to find the Q. So for the last part, Q is uh, delta U minus the work done on the gas. So it is negative 1.35 times 10 to the fifth minus now the work done on the gas is positive 0.9 times 10 to the fifth. So this will give us negative 2.25 times 10 to the fifth joules. 
and that will be the heat added to the gas. Since the heat added to the gas is negative, that means this heat is actually removed from the gas. What if we're going from state 1 to state 2 through a two-part process? The first part is an isochoric process from state 1 to a state that has the same temperature as the state 2. Then, as an isothermal process to state 2. Draw the PV diagram for the two-part process and find the change in internal energy for the two-part process. We start with an isochoric or isovolumetric process. That means the volume stays the same, so it is going to be a vertical line. So start from state 1 will either go straight up or straight down. The thing is that we need to get to a state that has the same temperature as the state 2, which means that we need to go from state 1 to a state that has the same temperature on the same isothermal curve as state 2. Since isothermal curves, they look like this. That means from state 1, we have to go down to reach that same temperature. So we can make a isothermal curve. So every single state on this isothermal curve has the same temperature as state number 2. And then we have to go this vertical line from state 1 to this state that has the same temperature as state number 2. So this state has uh, the same temperature as state number 2. That means uh, same P times V, which means uh, P times V of this particular state must have the same pressure times volume as the state number 2. So the pressure, we don't know, times the volume, that's 0.5, equals to the pressure times volume for state number 2. The pressure is uh, 3 atmospheres. The volume is 0.2. So here we can get the pressure equals to 1.2. Since I used atmosphere over here, so this pressure should be atmosphere as well. So this pressure must be 1.2 atmospheres. And then isothermal process to state number 2, which means that we're just following this isothermal curve to go there. So for part B, the PV diagram is like this. It's a two-part process. Now let's find the delta U. Delta U is the final U minus the initial U. The final state is number 2, the initial state is number 1. So it's the internal energy of state 2 minus the internal energy of state 1. If you remember, the internal energy is a function of state. So state number 2 has a certain amount of internal energy. The state number 1 has a certain amount of internal energy. If we compare this delta U to that delta U, if we go straight from 1 to 2, isobaric process, the delta U would be the U of state 2 minus the U of state 1, which is exactly the same as the, the delta U through a different process. So this delta U would be exactly the same, negative 1.35 times 10 to the fifth joules. Because the internal energy is a function of state, that means the Delta U does not depend on the path it takes. If it's going from state 1 to 2, the internal energy change is going to be same amount. It doesn't matter which path you take. You can take a totally different path like this way. The delta U would still be the same negative 1.35 times 10 to the fifth joules. So delta U does not depend on the path it takes. However, W and the Q, they do depend on the path. For W, remember, the work done on the gas, it's related to the area of the graph. So if I go through this path, we're looking at the area under that graph. If I follow the second path, then the area under the graph will be this part of the area under the graph. So a different path will give us a different area. 
the delta u does not depend on the path, but w depends on the path. That means q must also depend on the path. So parts a and b have the same delta u, but they would have different w and different q. Another important thing for you to remember is that for monatomic ideal gases, the delta u is the change in 3 halves PV. This is only true for monatomic ideal gas because a monatomic ideal gas has only translational kinetic energy, no other types of kinetic energy. This means that if you see a problem that bothers to tell you that you have a monatomic ideal gas, it is likely that you will be using delta U equals to the change in 3 halves PV for that problem.